Hey everyone, today I'm going to try and show you how to get your dishwasher fixed. My name is Jeff and uh, I had similar problems here where my dishwasher uh, wasn't getting dishes clean, wasn't draining properly, and there was an odor coming from inside of the dishwasher. So I'm going to show you here uh, how we can potentially fix some of those issues. Now, before uh, we start working on the dishwasher itself, one of the causes uh, could be the blocked drain pipe that's coming out of the dishwasher. So my dishwasher, there's actually a black pipe that runs from the dishwasher, goes underneath my cabinets, comes up right here, and then goes into my garbage disposal. You can see these pipe clamps back here that are holding that pipe on. These just take a, a screwdriver here to loosen up, and then this pipe would pop off. Sometimes this drain pipe gets clogged. So that can definitely be one issue. You also want to make sure that your uh, garbage disposal is not somehow blocked with some sort of food debris particles. I mean, all that is basically coming from whatever's going down your sink drain right here. Um, so different areas to check, make sure that those are not blocked. I've got an insincorator garbage disposal, did a whole install video on this. So if you do need to replace garbage disposal, you can check out that video as well. Different tools and things I'm going to be using in this video. So to mop up the water from the dishwasher, you can get yourself a bucket, a sponge. Uh, I would also get yourself a roll of paper towel. Uh, you probably want to get yourself some rubber gloves uh, and then you're going to need like a flathead screwdriver, an adjustable wrench, uh, for some sort of dish for all the screws and stuff you're going to take out. Uh, I'm using an electric driver or some sort of power drill is going to work. To get a lot of the screws out of the dishwasher you're going to need, I'm using a T15 bit. If you have a different dishwasher than I do it might be a slightly different bit. Flathead screwdriver, we're going to get our impeller off and then I'm using just a butter knife to help remove the uh, end caps on my top dish rack. Now most dishwashers are all built the same. So mine's a Kenmore. We've got a Kenmore 665. Even if you don't have a Kenmore, maybe you've got a Whirlpool or another brand, they're all built very similar. The The whole inside process is pretty much the same. A, a piece or two might be looking slightly different, but they all operate pretty much the same. You can find out all the information about your dishwasher. If you look on one of these sides, there's usually some sort of a sticker that they put on in there, and that is going to tell you all the information. I can see here this is a Kenmore 665 you can find out all the information on your dishwasher so we're going to take the inside apart before we do that i have to take these racks out otherwise i can't get access uh, inside so my bottom rack here just slides right out we're going to put this off to the side and then i find it gives me a lot more room to work if i take this top rack out now this top rack on mine is being held in by these clips these clips are on either corner. So I'm just using something thin like a butter knife to get in here and just pry uh, pry in this little clip that's holding this stopper in place. From that point I can, once I've got that unclipped, I can just kind of shimmy this out and then this clip is just going to sit off to the side. This is what that clip's going to look like. This is the piece that I just pushed in. Doing the same on my other side here so that I can push this stopper up and then let's just pull it right out of there. With the stoppers off I can go all the way in here and I'll be able to just pull this all the way out. The wheels come out of the track. So from this point we've got access to the bottom of the dishwasher. If you've got standing water down there go ahead and get yourself a cup. Um, go ahead and start just taking water out of there. Get yourself a small bucket. You want to get as much water out of here as possible so that you can clearly see what you need to work with. When you get down to uh, probably the last of the water, you can use some sort of a big sponge if you've got one to go ahead and just start mopping all that up. Clear all that water out of there so that you've got an area that's a little bit easier to work with. Hey, so real quick, if you happen to spot Tinker, Tinker is our little hidden robot and I hide him in every one of the do-it-yourself and videos on this channel. He's going to briefly pop up somewhere during this video. If you happen to spot him, take note of the timestamp. That's the amount of time into this video that he pops up. Let me know that correct timestamp down in the comments section below. And if you're the first person to correctly spot him, 
Uh, I will give you a shout out in one of my future videos as well as I will add your name to our Tinker Ford Hall of Fame page. So you've got your lower sprayer that spins. We're gonna, there's a, a screw right here. We're gonna unscrew that. And that is going to allow you to lift this lower sprayer out of here. There's this little white bushing that sits underneath that sprayer. I'm going to set this right underneath it so that I remember that this has to go in. So this gives us access to the pump cover. This pump cover has got eight different screws. I'm using a T15 bit to go into these. Yours might be the same. Yours might be slightly different but that's just what I'm using. You've got yourself some sort of a power drill or a driver. It's gonna make this go a whole lot faster. I'm gonna unscrew all of these screws. I'd recommend you get like a little cup to put them in off to the side on your counter so you don't lose these guys. I also would just recommend you take extra special care as you're unscrewing each one of these so that you don't accidentally drop it down here. I've done it, then you gotta go fish for it with a pair of needle nose pliers. So just as I'm unscrewing each one, I'm making sure I'm right here to capture it so it doesn't fall. So with my screws out, this cover is now free. Uh, I can just pull this out. This kind of seeds into this piece, this manifold here. So uh, we're gonna pull that out. I'm just gonna pull this off for now. So it might be easier if you want to remove this manifold piece, you can. On mine, there is a plastic nub that's sticking out of the back of the dishwasher, and I can just kind of pull down on this gently, and that's going to unhook it. Just want to take care that you don't knock out any of the hosing or you don't rip anything. But now this I can just set off to the side. That gives me a little bit more area to work. Okay, we're getting close to being able to remove the filter here. Can't remove it yet though. There is this impeller that's down here and you'll see that there's a little bolt. I believe that's a quarter inch bolt. So I got an adjustable wrench here and I've got it just uh, maneuvered around this impeller piece down here to hold this in place. I'm gonna use my quarter inch uh, bit so that I can uh, unscrew that screw that's down there. All right, that screw comes right out. Mine actually had a little washer on the end right here, so I want to make sure I don't lose that. That's going to stay on there. And even though I've got that screw out of there, the impeller's not coming off. I got myself a flathead screwdriver. Get that underneath and just start kind of gently prying on the edges here. I'm just kind of loosening it up. Eventually, I'm able to pry it up, and that piece comes out. So there's that piece. So down in here, we've got one, two, three, four more of these uh, T15 screws. Boy, if you don't have a T15 bit, you're, uh, you're in trouble. These screws are a little bit longer. Now I'm able to pull this piece out of the dishwasher. Ooh. You're going to find that your dishwasher is probably going to have a lot more gunk. Um, if it does, I would get yourself some paper towel. I would get yourself maybe a toothbrush that you don't love anymore. And I would just start to scrub all of that nasty out of this area because I found that you get a lot of food buildup and things like that in this area. Take a quick second, smash that like button if this video is helping you out. So from this point, there is this little uh, chopper blade that we're just going to pull off and also set to the side because this access down here there's actually little balls in this cavity down here um, this plastic piece here there's another screw to take off taking that screw out gives me access to this cover again we're going to clean this up set this off to the side there's this little white piece that comes out little gasket we're going to set that over here now you should have some balls down here i've got uh, at least one. Sometimes there's two of them. Uh, these help just kind of block. We're going to take that out. Uh, for me, this is where my problem was. This was all completely clogged up. Um, if you need to go further, you can actually remove this piece right here. So once we're at this part, you want to make sure that this whole area is also free of any type of food particles, debris, anything like that. 
Now I also found as I was down here that there was little particles of broken glass and dishes. So just take care as you're going through this area. We're going to put this chopper back on. Now when you put this back on, there's actually a little groove here that the bottom spring actually seeds into. So here I've got my old filter and uh, it's probably hard to see on the video, but there's all sorts of gunk and garbage, food and stuff that is stuck inside this thing. Now I took a screwdriver and I messed with it. I could not get it apart. I believe that it's made so that you're not taking it apart. I just ordered another one of these. So here's the replacement filter and uh, ordered this online. I will leave a link down in the video description as to where I got this. Uh, this works for my Kenmore 665. Uh, and I'm just going to put it back the way I uh, removed the old one. This one's much cleaner, much nicer. So when I'm putting it back, I'm lining up this socket hole here with my hole that's down here. And then I'm also going to have my four screws that are going back in. So I have to make sure that the holes line up as well. Okay, with this back in, again, make sure you have everything scrubbed out. Yummy. Put my impeller back on. Now this black piece only fits in one way because that piece underneath is grooved. So you got to make sure it pushes down. Get my screw with that little washer back in there. Holding it in place with my adjustable wrench. So at this point I'm replacing my water feed tube going up top and that just kind of clips back in there. I have that gasket. So now I put my cover on and I'm going to make sure that it seeds into this water feed tube. And then line up my holes. Go ahead and screw those all back down. So for my bottom sprayer, I'm going to put this white bushing on. And I've got the uh, sprayers. Let's go ahead and tighten this back on. All right, let's go ahead and reinsert our uh, dish racks. So I'm going to seed the wheels for this top rack into those rails. Got one in, got the other one in. And then if I pull this out a little bit, get access to those ends. I'm going to go ahead and reinsert our clips. Go ahead and push in our top rack. So with the bottom rack in, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and reinsert this by the way. So I've ordered uh, replacement rungs online. If any of your rungs are breaking or maybe they're rusted out or something like that, these back ones on this tray are actually easily replaceable. And I'll leave a link to where you can uh, find replacement rungs if you need those as well. I'm going to run this now. I'm going to throw some dish uh, soap in there with no dishes in the dishwasher. And I'm just going to run this. This particular model also has like a sandy rinse. Uh, so I'm going to run that as well. Just to give this a good clean out uh, from all that gunk, any food debris, stuff like that that would be stuck in here. Um, and then from that point, I would say do a trial run with your dishes and see if they come out a little bit cleaner. Hopefully everything's draining good. Uh, you may want to just uh, keep an eye on this while it's doing that initial washing just to make sure that nothing's leaking and make sure that it is draining correctly. So I hope the tips in this video get your dishwasher working again. Once again, make sure you check all those little crevices, cavities, check the Hose go into your uh, garbage disposal. Look for any places where you might have clogs, leaks, things like that. Uh, and then be sure to check down in the description below for links to any of the parts and things I talked about in this video. My name is Jeff, and uh, I do appreciate you guys watching. Leave me comments down below uh, on how things went for you. You can catch weekly tech and do-it-yourself project videos on this channel. If you like this content, I encourage you to subscribe hit that like button and uh, you'll be uh, in the know for all the uh, future videos that I release. So be sure to make every day awesome and I will see you in the next video.